I'm trying to think of the last time I featured a power bank. I think it's some time ago, so let's have another power bank. And this one came from TK Maxx a long time ago and is styled like a black pussy. And I was hoping originally that the module inside, I can feel the module if I squeeze the pussy. But I was hoping to get it out, but it's very tight. And although I can squeeze my finger into this very tight black pussy, there's no way I'm going to get that module out. So I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to have to cut this open because uh, it does have a little black sphincter here, which feels as though it might have some sort of cord around it, that they've maybe put the thing in, then they've pulled the cord and it's tightened it up. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm going to have another quick finger before I use destructive weaponry in this. This video is also a shameless excuse to make black pussy jokes. Smutty, doubly entendre. Which reminds me of uh, Kenny Everett. I'm going to have to cut this open, I think. Uh, Kenny Everett, for those of you old enough to remember uh, the Kenny Everett video show. Oop, going to have to be careful here that I don't cut a wire, because the last thing I want here is a smoking black pussy. Oh, that's, uh, that's quite promising. Uh, Kenny Everett had a really smutty-ish character in his video show. It's a really old show from a long time ago. Uh, called, it was a cartoon called Captain Crimin. Oh, oh, right, okay. Oh, I ripped that wide open. Oh, not to worry. But he had this, uh, oh, it really has ripped wide open. The, the pussy has exploded. It's no longer a pussy, it's a gonk now. Oh, this, the size of this uh, kind of alludes to why it didn't seem to have a very high capacity. Capacity 2000 milliamp hour, I test it 1.6 amp hour. Getting back to the Kenny Everett video show, he had this cartoon character called Captain Kremen, and Captain Kremen was this valiant explorer of space, and his sidekick was a uh, was a uh, Carla, the sexy black sidekick, and all the jokes were about black holes. So it'd be like, well, Carla, what do you think? Oh, gee, Captain Kremen, you're such a tease. It was very, very tongue-in-cheek. The whole show was pretty terrible. This thing is glued together. I'm going to try and spudger it open. I may have to pause while I plow into this. I'm guessing by the look of it, it's just based on standard lithium cells, and it's fully charged. Oh, you know, do we do a... cut? Oh, no, I can't do a current test in it easily because I don't think I've got a tester that will easily take this connector. It's got the micro USB for going straight into your device or you can plug it into this little adapter, uh, which I'm guessing is Apple. Um, this uh, also has a red and blue LED inside it, which uh, red lights for charging, red flashes for charging, red for fully charged and blue for discharging. I'm guessing they've just used standard four, ca four core cable and uh, used to the two power cores and the other two are being used the LED. I'm going to have to squeeze this, I think. I'm going to have to pause. This doesn't look like it's going to come apart easily. I'm noting already it has three little vent holes to let the smoke out. Uh, I'm going to give this a squeeze in a vice. I'll be back short. No, I won't be back short. I'll just squeeze it right now. Where is the vice? Uh, I might have to pause just to actually find the vice. One moment, please. Behold the vice of knowledge. Let's just give this a little... Squeeze. It's making cracking noises. That's quite good. Let's uh, encourage it along by chapping it with a pair of pliers. Oh, that's that worked. Oh, yes. Oh, it's a loose circuit board. Okay. So we've got a fairly chunky lithium cell. It doesn't feel puffed up. That's good. We've got a little module. Um, oh, I thought that might be in its own little compartment, but it's not. It is stuck in with the dreaded double-sided tape. 1,850 milliamp hour, so the capacity I got of 1.6 ampere wasn't far off it. It is one single cell. Does it have built-in protection on the cell? Let's say. Uh... Oh, what's that little wire there for? Is that a little extra wire? Or is that? No, that's just the tip of the air. Uh... Okay, let's uh, get this out of the way. Will there be extra protection? Oh no, I don't even need, need to look for extra protection on there. It's got protection in the form of DW01, DW01, and the classic 8205 MOSFET, so it's already got protection. The driver chip is a IP5303. That is very familiar. IP53. I'm just going to go and grab that data sheet.
Ah, the joy of the internet. Don't take this for granted. Just try and think what it was like in the old days when the internet did not exist and to find a data sheet on anything was hard. Nowadays, you just go online and you generally find the data sheet it is entirely in Chinese, well, mostly in Chinese, which uh, doesn't really bother us in this instance since we've got this schematic here and schematics in our universal language. So looking at the circuitry, uh, well, I zoom down just a little bit more. I'll zoom down just a tad more. Too much. Probably more or less the same as it was before. I shall move this across a bit as well. Blech. There we go. That's better. So what do we have? We have the chip, the inductor, we've got the capacitors. The only bit I'm not seeing immediately here is the resistors associated with the two indicator LEDs that are going out on the pink and green wires down to the connector. So I'm guessing there's a little circuit board down in this plug here that has the resistors and the LEDs on it. Other than that, the incoming supply from that connector goes to the red and black. The black is common to the output, which it is here. It has a 2 ohm and 10 microfarad uh, filter across it. In this case, they've used a 2.2 ohm just because it's a standard value, 2R2. And then they've got the 10 microfarad capacitor across that as well. So it's pretty much textbooks. That's the input. The output has the, in the vicinity here, has those two capacitors across it, 22 microfarad and 10 microfarad. I'm guessing that's what those two are. They're right next to that connector. The inductor has the uh, let's see, what is this one? Does this one say what the inductor's value is? No, it doesn't. It's a mystery inductor. But it has the little capacitor next to it, which is shown here. So it is pretty much textbook. And then if we come across to here, uh, the this side of the circuit board, they've just added that on completely separate. It's battery protection. It's the DW01 and the MOSFET, plus the two resistors and capacitor that's commonly associated with that circuit. So to be honest, it's rather predictably, there's not an awful lot to it, but it does have the advantage of having that extra DW01 protection, which means if the voltage goes down too low, it will cut the battery off to protect it from being over-discharged, which is quite a nice feature. It's very basic. It's fundamentally a bit like a standard... A mini power bank, something like this, but just with the circuit board just stuffed into this box next to the battery and brought out as cables. Very simple. Almost disappointingly simple. When I felt this through the padding of inside this thing, it felt like much bigger batteries. I was almost envisaging that it might be two or three 18650s, but it's just a, a standard rectangular cell in this case, which has been glued shut. With vent holes, which is nice, the vent holes which are right next to the battery, which makes reasonable sense. It'll stop the thing blowing open forcibly if it starts venting gas. I'm not sure what would happen if one of these exploded inside. I'm guessing this would be combustible. Oh, I've got to test that now, haven't we? Is the fluffy interior combustible? Mm, I'd say that's a yes. Okay, so that's combustible. Lovely. Let's set fire to the bench, shall we? What about the exterior, the black fur? I have certain reservations about uh, lithium cells being used inside fluffy things just in case things do let rip. So let's uh, get that bit of modern plastic out of the way. What about the fur on the outside? Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, I'd say that's fairly combustible as well. Okay, so it's a completely combustible power bank made of fur. Nice. That's very sooty. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what can I take from this? Well, I quite like the cell. I quite like the little charging circuitry. Um, it's a shame that the LEDs aren't on board, but then you wouldn't see it through the casing. And it's the ultimate, I suppose, you could just leave this connector on, which has those LEDs inside it. Or it could burst the connector open. I could burst that connector open and look at the circuit board. That would be the best way to complete the video, wouldn't it? So, yes, I'm going to burst this open. Let's, uh, let's get something I can actually do that with. I don't think the sputter is going to have much an effect. Because I think this is going to be moulded. So I shall... I shall chop this apart. One moment, please. 
And consider it busted open, it doesn't have resistors inside it. It's got a tiny little marshalling circuit board for the connections in the USB connector and for support. And for the two outer connections of the positive and negative, and the two inner connections are going to those two LEDs, which share a common, if I recall, with negative. Do they share it with negative? Yes, they do. So, um, yeah, I guess it, maybe it's just not using resistors just because it wants those LEDs to be a lot brighter. It's driving them at the maximum output current of the chip just so they shine through the fairly tough plastic case because it's not very translucent plastic. Um, and even then, the LEDs didn't look too bright, so it must, must just be driving them at basically full output current, limited only by the little switching transistor in that chip. Uh, let's set far to that as well then. For no good reason. Ta-da! Oh. Excellent. Well, that was pointless, but quite pleasing nonetheless. So there we go. That's what's inside a tight black pussy USB power bank. And the, the pussy, oh, like that's got the little uh, press-in stud for the nose. Yes, interesting enough. I could make a min muff out of this for a microphone, couldn't I? That'd be quite good for that because it is black. I wonder how transparent to sound it is. Probably quite good. Yeah, you could make a a little microphone cover out of that. I shall keep it for that reason. But there we go. That's uh, that's it. Module, battery, external connectors, and a combustible fluffy pussy. Apparently it's the gift that keeps on giving. After I'd uh, stopped making the video, I suddenly realised that my tester here, this little tester, does have a micro USB in. So I was able to plug this into it, put it under load, and it came in at just over, I think it was 1.26 amps before it cut out. So it does deliver the 1.26 amps, although the voltage does drop a little bit. That might partly be down to the thinness of the wires leading out to there, though. But then I also uh, peeled off the black tape from the battery here, and notable things, it's got an 86 degrees Celsius and 2 amp rated sort of, I guess, combi fuse. Is that combined thermal and um, and overcurrent? Not sure. Uh, plus, it's also got an auxiliary battery protection uh, arrangement there, little circuit board. And it did that. What I thought initially was a yellow wire did turn out to be a yellow wire. I wonder if it was just the edge of the captain tape. But it's uh, almost like a phone type uh, battery pack in the sense that it's got the battery protection on board and it's also got this uh, the thermal fuse plus the little wire that signals out which might just be connected to either a thermistor or just a resistor to indicate what size of battery pack is attached. But interestingly it's not a DW1 this one, it's a kind of SW39 if that makes sense, I couldn't find that. And also a strange MOSFET with uh, about four pins I think it is. Is it four pins? Yeah. Oh no, it's got four pins at the bottom, one big one at the top. Maybe I did stumble across that. But it's a MOSFET package called 4B. Don't know if you can see that. Uh, which I'm guessing this is just an alternative arrangement for a uh, protection board. So it's an interesting little thing. I just thought that was uh, quite novel. That it's not only got the protection afforded by the chip, but it's got extra protection here, and then a third layer of protection plus the fuse. So they've uh, allowed for lots of things. It doesn't mean it won't just melt down and burst into flames, but it does provide a lot of extra protection. I wonder if that means this battery was uh, sourced from some other application or something like that. It's very hard to say. But uh, interesting that it's got all these extra layers. It just adds a little bit more to what it is.